All right, welcome back from that report. Young people are doing tremendously well. The role of youth in nation building has never been more crucial. Young people bring fresh perspectives, creativity, and a drive to challenge the status quo. Across the globe, youths are leading movements for social justice, environmental protection, and economic reform, leveraging digital platforms to mobilize support, raise awareness, and hold leaders accountable. In education, digital tools have increased access, especially for marginalized communities. In entrepreneurship, young people are harnessing e-commerce and digital marketing to create sustainable businesses. Now, my guest, Seth Usan, uh, CEO of Padimi.com, is a visionary leader with 12 plus years of private sector consultancy experience. A graduate of Igbenedian University, he is a member of the National Institute of Management. Now, Seth's entrepreneurial ventures span finance technology, financial inclusion, and social enterprise, driving impactful change. Leading Padimi.co, he pioneers innovative fintech solutions democratizing financial access in Nigeria. With deep industry knowledge and a commitment to excellence, Seth empowers individuals and businesses shaping the future of finance. Many thanks for joining me, uh, Seth. You have so many feathers to your cup. Thank you, JJ. <laughs> All right, it's international, you see, and um, the young people, you will agree with me, are doing tremendously well when it comes to the digital space, uh, tech, ICT generally. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. so I think um, Nigerians are very resi resilient individuals, also especially the youths, um, because we were we have um, that generation where um, job creation is at an all-time low. Mm -hmm. We've had to fend for ourselves. So a lot of people have gone the digital way, trying to create new ventures for themselves, and mm -hmm. also find micro spots where they can, the micro gaps where they can fail mm -hmm. in. So like you rightly said, e-commerce, recycling, sustainable development, you know, education, they're doing a lot to mm. promote um, self-development. Mm. Um, and they're also spearheading and driving those changes. Okay, so let's talk about youths as architects now for the future, because you have said so much, you know, about the youths, uh, specifically the ones in Nigeria who are actually driving positive changes and, uh, you know, getting jobs for themselves because of uh, what we, uh, our own, uh, you know, uh, reality as it is now. You know, in the digital age, um, you know, I think the role, uh, the role of the youths uh, can be brought to bear because right now they have, um, uh, they are armed with um, smartphones, they have, uh, all sort of information, access to internet. Uh, uh, do you really think the young people, sp specifically in Nigeria and in Africa, are actually making the most of what technology or technological tools have uh, brought to them? Well, looking at statistics, um, let's speak of Nigeria first of all. Okay. You have at least 16% of our population are digital literate, right? Mm. The smartphone usage of smartphone penetration, as at last year, was over 38 million people, mm. meaning that basically, of 200 million people, 16% mm. thereabout are already computer literate and digital savvy. Mm. So I believe that um, with the right tools and resources, for the fact that we are um, industrious, a lot of people are pushing forward and striving forward to better engage. And it's not only in Nigeria, it's across Africa, mm -hmm. right? Um, the global demographic um, age range, so people between the ages of 18 to say, let's use 45, 50. You have, a, you have a higher percentage of young people. Mm. And now with the times, evolution, AI and the rest, yes, mm. there is a lot going on. And they are spearheading those changes. Okay, fine. Uh, before we get to talk about digital pathways for sustainable development, because uh, we have to look at um, SDG uh, uh, 2030 uh, and all of that. But uh, let's talk about you, for instance, since we are celebrating the young people, you are indeed uh, a youth. So tell me how were you able to, or how you were able to navigate all through the storms and uh, be able to come out with your own uh, sense of entrepreneurship and uh, uh, blessed uh, padimi.com and... Uh, how it has been so far? So I think um, self-actualization has been a difficult one, not just for me, but for a lot of Nigerians. Mm. Honing to the fact that um, the start up, to start up anything, you need a lot of capital. Mm. It means you have to have a lot of grit and integrity and grind and drive to be mm. able to achieve that. So using myself, right, um, it was not rosy to mm. get to that point. There had to be a lot of self-education, I have a background in banking and finance, mm -hmm. right? So if I had gone 
via the pathway of banking and finance, I'd be stuck in as a white collar, mm. high level executive right now. But taking the path as an entrepreneur meant having to create new charts, having to mm. go into new layers. Mm. When we started Padimi, it was in the midst of COVID. Everybody was locked at home, mm. right? So thanks to digital technology, we were able to start, you know, there was no movement. So we had to, everything was online, getting resources, making connections, that's it. everything was online. So it was challenging for me, and I'm sure it's been challenging for most entrepreneurs mm. and startup people. They will tell you that you have to have the grit and you have to have tenacity to be able to, mm. to build. So um, we hope that the government will keep on adding more programs like they're doing right now to okay. enable you, the youths, mm. charter their way forward so that the next generation can spearhead, you know, Africa, Nigeria's growth of the world. I believe that there are lots of potential and lots of resources here. Yeah. And for the fact that we are hardworking, you know, we should be able to carve our way forward. If you look at diaspora, a lot of Nigerians are spearheading a lot of technology. Yeah. So we should continue doing that. Okay, no, so let's specifically talk about the, the theme for this year, which underscores the importance of digital pathways in achieving United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. There are several of um, the SDG goals. Uh, but let's talk about youth and the use of technology. But how would you really say uh, the Nigerian space or the African space have actually helped in uh, honing the skills of young people in terms of um, innovating and uh, looking for tailor-made solutions to uh, meet all of uh, the challenges to address issues of um, poverty, issues of um, education, and um, you know general well-being. So uh, we could use the so I think first of all Vision 3030, mm. where that says we want to have at least over 70 percent digital literacy in mm. nigeria mm. and the rest of the world using the SDG goals so i believe that a lot of effort has been put into various factors to spearhead these challenges or this this particular goals now bringing it down to us yes. um a lot of young people have started to key into the digital economy right mm. so you have a lot of people doing data science web mm. development front-end back-end engineers mm. people trying to have different niches for themselves in that ecosystem. Um, to be able to have everything interconnect together, I believe that uh, a lot more effort has to be put in, okay. right, in terms of connecting. On whose part? Okay. So from all, all the players, okay. the government, right, the private sector, the public sector, everybody has to work together to come to okay. achieve this goal, not just Nigeria, but globally. Okay. Um, you have the foreign partners trying to do their bits, but we have to also carry the button on our own end hmm. to improve each and every variant. So, for instance, the access to digital networks, hmm. your, uh, the internet, yes. has to also improve. The adoption is up by 38%, hmm. right? Nigeria is boasting of at least 38 million social users, hmm. right, daily. Now, this tells us that a large portion of people are digitally savvy or holding phones or trying okay. to connect to the internet in money. So, the best thing, the way I see it is that we have to have more enabled enabling programs yeah with low barriers to entry okay so not where they tell you oh if you don't have a bsc so 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 and so you can't mm -hmm. attend you have a lot of um hubs doing startup courses build up okay. courses where total novices can come in mm -hmm. pick up these digital skills and then expand using their own ideas and other things so i believe that those those are the pathways that can help mm -hmm. us achieve that goal Okay, so fine. Let's still talk about uh, entrepreneurship. You are an entrepreneur, and uh, since we are celebrating young people, uh, and uh, there have always been this call for young people to um, harness and the power of e-commerce and digital marketing to create business that will actually not only generate um, income, but also meet needs and, uh, you know, solutions to Nigerians. But in that wise, you know, how would you say, or uh, what more can be done to ensure uh, that... Uh, e-commerce uh, digital marketing just that uh, will take it or uh, make it like a hub so practically uh, it will be uh, something that people can come in and begin to reap all of the benefits well, so um i think the access is there mm. you just need willing hands to be able to willing want, hands. yes want okay. to jump into it so e-commerce right now take for example base trade mm. the a lot of youths have multiple lines like you know in nigeria mm. people have two lines Every time you click on someone's WhatsApp, it is WhatsApp for business. Mm -hmm. These tools are already generating revenue. They are already bringing people into the e-commerce space. Okay. So you have people digitizing their micro businesses, their micro services already. Mm. Now, in this forefront, I believe that um, with a little more push, 
right from like i said the various parties you can have more an, a more inclusive environment um, a lot of people are building a lot of things. technology is driving a lot technology is pushing a lot the gone are the years where facebook was the only marketplace now every other social media network is a marketplace mm. people are selling off instagram selling off x people are selling off everywhere so these mm. digital tools are available and i believe that it just takes a little bit of push to be able to configure the mindset that oh you can't you don't only have to sell physically from a location but you can as well you can sell digitally mm -hmm. so with all of this i think that the e-commerce will drive a lot of industries okay fine e-commerce is a big thing uh, digital marketing is a big thing even uh, entrepreneurship now uh, practically everyone is selling something like you said on even whatsapp statuses and all of that but the, the thing right now is that they have the platform they have all the access but let's talk about managing it and bringing the money sense into it, bringing the organization and the sense of our entrepreneurship what uh, messages what narrative should we be driving so i for that particular thing i think enlightenment is still is still is still key so just having a phone and putting something on your status doesn't make you a businessman per se mm -hmm. you are a businessman but you are not a holistic businessman okay um, entrepreneurship involves a lot of tiny thing, business, money management, time management, uh -huh. and all other factors. So I believe that um, education is also key uh -huh. because it drives, it gives you more information. The more access to information you have, the better resources, the better you're able to manage your resources. Okay. So I feel that um, for that particular thing, education is a must. Um, the hubs have to do more. The schools have to do more. The universities have to do more. I believe that the curriculum also has to change. Mm. Going at the days where being, being a doctor was mm. the epitome of, you mm. know, the table or being a surgeon. Now, being a businessman, you, some businessmen earn higher than surgeons. Mm. If you take Nigeria, for instance, your average social media influencer is making more money than uh, someone who works 9 to 5 in the bank. Okay. So I believe that this, this, diaphragm, this shift... Yeah. right in the ecosystem has to cut across board and okay. education and information is the only way to make this happen in the schools you have to preach in the schools universities mm -hmm. even at the young age you have to promote digital literacy so mm -hmm. that by the time they come of age they're already armed with the right tools to mm -hmm. be able to fit anywhere in the world speaking of digital literacy you know uh, most people you know would say that uh, it is more uh predominant uh, in the urban areas in the the cities and everything so this digital literacy you know how far have we really pushed it to the hinterlands to the rural areas i know us uh, uh for fintech really uh, I've practically uh, the, we uh, nigeria is practically reaching the unbanked population you know through the pos and uh, all, all, all of the financial um, angles but then Digital literacy, how far can we go or what do we need to do so we can actually reach uh, the uh, hinterlands and uh, the rural communities? So I believe for, for it to reach the hinterlands, everybody must be a town crier. Mm. Meaning so that... Should all go to gongs, <laughs> <laughs> so, so by town crying, I mean that, um, yeah. that the narrative of digital, narr uh, digital literacy mm. isn't just about being able to use a cell phone okay. or being able to manipulate a cell phone. Mm. It has to do a lot more with um, understanding the basic dynamics of what that information can do for you. Mm. So having access to a phone, being able to use WhatsApp or Facebook doesn't make you, it makes you a smartphone savvy person, but doesn't make you digital illiterate. Mm. Because the fact is there are so many other pinpoints, eco smaller micro ecosystems that all function together that make up that whole, so like how you talked about financial inclusion and social mm. inclusion. I believe that drivers have to be put in place. So you have people who do micro courses off of, they, you go online and say, oh, buy my digital course, mm -hmm. right? Those courses have to be expanded. And it has to go into, oh, micro, like I always, like I like to preach, mm -hmm. right? D micro saving habits are mm -hmm. the best ways to build a foundation for anybody. Okay. So those, those micro saving habits that form the bedrock of why should I save? Mm -hmm. Why should I take my health as mm. paramount why should insurance be important what's the most imp why should i understand the importance of what the internet can do for mm -hmm. me all right or how it can connect me to other people those are the variants that need to be town cried okay all right so as we uh, round off now you know still in the in the light of uh, celebrating young people let's uh, celebrate uh, you and Padimi. I know over time you you started them um, this digital issue and uh, you have some other platforms so what 
is new in your in your line oh for us so basically we are trying to the dream initially was to bring everybody was to connect the unbanked mm. and financially excluded um we're hitting our milestones but right now we're trying to see how we can interface more with the government okay so right now there are lots of stimulus packages going about you know mm. trade money fair money you know as, sorry trade money and all the other okay. um products that the government is putting out so right now we are trying to use our community and ecosystem to drive those changes mm -hmm. in the sense that when we were onboarding users it was for the self mm. we would give you the tools to arm yourself mm. and we'll also be able to provide micro lending micro finance mm. to you to help you bolster your business but right now we're, we're reaching to be able to connect with the government initiative and programs so that the it can spread faster okay all right so it is one of those things where oh it was a small circle of 10 mm. now it's a circle of 100 okay right by the time you empower the 100 they mm. will go and empower more people so we're looking at you know, interfacing more with the government programs so that we can touch okay. more lives, basically. Right, thank you so much, uh, Seth Osanga, for your time. And uh, we wish you the best uh, in all that you do with Pademia and, of course, uh, trying to reach people and try to make sure that people get um, included uh, financially and, of course, socially. We thank you so much you. for having me. It's always a pleasure. All right. Yeah. So that's the size of the show for today. As we go, let's celebrate uh, the young people. Uh, let us recognize the invaluable contributions of young people in the digital age their creativity resilience and commitment to building a better world and driving uh, progress towards a more sustainable development uh, or sustainable future generally that's the size of the show for today my name is justin akadoni many thanks for being there I'll see you again next time bye for now <laughs>